Hi there, I'm David Batsoff and, and I host a travel blog called Travel and Things. I'm doing a series called In Conversation With where I chat to people in the travel industry and also in the entertainment industry to keep us laughing on a weekly basis. And today my guest is none other than Caroline Lucas, who is the owner of Morsetla Bush Camp. But unfortunately for her, she's not in the bush currently. She's here in Johannesburg. Caroline, how are you doing? Good, thank you, David. How are you? Very well, thank you. You're not in the bush. I take it looking at the surroundings. No, no, we're not in the bush. Haven't been for, well, since the 27th of March. Haven't been up there. The, the Madikwe gates are literally closed. Yeah, I, I believe so. I was chatting to other camps that I was meant to have been at um, in the, at the beginning of June. And they told me that exact thing, that they had to have permits to get in and out, let alone people visiting the camp. The guys have to, people there, cause so our manager is there, Monica. Monica's been there since the 27th and we've got one maintenance guy with her. And they, she has to, they all belong to a WhatsApp group. She has to WhatsApp when they go to collect water or if they need to go out of the gate to the general dealer, they have to tell the WhatsApp group where they are and what they're doing. So, <laughs> yeah, we're being so, controlled. So it's a bubble. It, I mean, it the, is the indeed. Is a bubble. It, it is indeed. Maybe we should all try and sneak in there and then we can live <laughs> in that bubble. That is the reason it's a bubble. We're keeping you out. <laughs> Caroline, talk us through Morsetla. I know that it's one of my favorite camps and going back in time to when your dad was still doing guide training, um, which was probably, what, 30 years ago? How old is the camp now? 25. We turn 25 on the 1st of July. We're, wow. It's, it's my birthday. Because I, I remember when the camp was started, it was started because of his range uh, of his guide training. Yes. And he is, is genuinely retiring yeah. now on Friday. It's his 80th birthday. And he said, that's it. I am now really retiring. So we'll see if that happens. I was, because <clears throat> he's still planning to go up to the reserve. The minute the, the borders open, he's going up to the reserve. He's got all his tins of oil and timber life and all the rest to go and, and maintain. <laughs> I'm so, yeah. I'm assuming that the camp is being looked after um, and that 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 um, with the people there so it's not you know the baboons are not going to move in and the elephants haven't destroyed it. The elephants have have been but but Monica's there so the elephants have been in we've had to have um, the fence repaired so, um, you know we've got that single electric wire around yeah. the so he, he broke that um so we've had him we've had him moved along we've had a parts board come in and help us and take all the the foliage away from the fence so that he that doesn't entice him in there right. baboons you know what we've never really had a problem with baboons because because there's nothing for them yeah um yeah all our food's locked away we have had a honey badger come and rip the door down we have a kitchen <laughs> the only door we have in the camp is on our kitchen <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ate his way through that. And there's, no, there's nothing there for him. You know, we're not preparing meals for guests. So right. there was, you know, there was some, of, some of Monica and Mosey's food in the fridge. And the, I, yeah, I think maybe he's just aware of your peppermint crisp dessert. He's, he's heard rumors and he was going to eat <laughs> ingredients he's if nothing else. So he knows it's there. <laughs> And the, you, what fascinates me about the camp, uh, Caroline, is the fact that you have a bird bath that serves as a watering hole for buffalo and any number of large animals, all of yes. whom, you know, you, you'd think that they'd walk on past it, but no, they want to come and drink there. Is there something special in your water at Mosetla? <laughs> There's nothing special. We've had a time, and it's small. Hey? It's, not, it's not much more than a meter. No. It's a bird and, bath. It's not a watering yeah. hole by any stretch of the imagination. And we've had three, three buffalo there at the same time, all fighting for position. And they managed, it was hilarious, they managed to slot themselves in right. um, so that they didn't have a drink. Obviously, that didn't last very long because it takes about 
four buckets of water. <laughs> <It's gone. laughs> but but we do. Um, Harry, our hyena, he comes in for, for the um, for the water, mm -hmm. um, and we do. We have we have all sorts in there. The warthogs, warthogs are in there. Um, kudu on occasion. But yes, it's mainly the buffalo. It shouldn't be a, it's a buffalo bath, not a, not a bird bath. It, it should indeed. I think the only thing I've ever photographed in that bird bath is blue wax bills. I've never had buffalo there. We've had, the lion, we've had a pride of lions there. You're kidding. This, this young male got his paw on either side of the... It was, it was like... Oh, sorry. It was like a, um, like, like a dog putting his paws on either side of, of a bowl. <laughs> was on either side and watching us while he was drinking. Was <laughs> now, now Musetli is a very special camp for, for many reasons. Firstly, it's an eco camp. Um, so I'd like you to talk us through what people can expect because th when they arrive there, there are certain things that are not maybe expected um, of guests. Like... Yeah donkey boilers and that type of thing. But I think it's part of the beauty of the camp. It's, uh, uh, and the donkey boiler is probably the most photographed thing in the camp. The, the, the donkey boiler, the griddle breakfast, yep, and then all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> donkey boiler comes first. Caroline, so, yes, is, there so, some, is there something moving behind you as we speak? Um, there, there is a cat, yes. I thought... For, for a moment, I thought your shoulders were moving. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone under the blanket. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> and there's now a tax. So, yes. Okay. I, I just want you to be aware. I don't want you to get a fright if it leaps on your head or something like that. <laughs> That's Gabriella. I found the, her in the wall forwards. Okay. Um, oh, there she is. Popped up and down. Anyway, back to more important issues. B back to um, your donkey boilers. Yes, uh, and the eco lodge. So yep. we have no running water, um, we have no electricity, uh, we have no bricks and mortar, we have no glass windows or doors. Everything is, is very rustic. It's um, wood and thatch, the, so the cabins are wood and thatch, and the, um, as you were saying, the donkey boiler. So we do have water. We, we fetch water every day from a, from a borehole. We have water, but it's not, it's not plumbed in. So you need to get a, bu a bucket of water, pour it through a donkey boiler to get it hot, and then you make a, um, your own shower, which is a safari shower, bucket, shower, rose, which is really cool. Um, it just sort of reminds people um, about how much water we use. You know, th this as much as you like. You can have a, a six bucket shower. Yeah. But you'll find that after one bucket, um, sorry, this cat now needs to go under there. Um, after, you know, one bucket will do you. Wash hair. This, this is the amazing thing. People don't realize it, that you can get everything done, everything washed and clean, and there's still water over in the bucket. Yes. So we do tend to waste. But aside from the, that, you've also got fantastic toilets um, that, that are VIP <laughs> toilets. They are. They're called VIP toilets, which is a ventilation improved pit. Um, and it's basically, it's a porcelain, porcelain toilet with a wooden seat, but without an S bend. So it just goes straight into a pit. Yep. Um, and then there's a chimney effort up the back of the toilet that you don't see. It's just outside the, the, the room. Um, and that, that keeps the air flowing and keeps it odor free and fly free. And people, that, that's, I think that's, people are so more amazed by that than anything else. I think so, because those of us that have used long drop toilets um, are well aware of the stench and, and the sort of in and outness of those things. But your toilets are a whole different kettle of fish. You can sit and read War and Peace in there and feel comfortable <laughs> with it. Well, that's the, that's the thing. You can spend a lot longer in there than you would. Those, those wooden... Um, Old, old long drops, but you just know the termites have been in there and it's going to collapse. <laughs> so, we, yeah. so the toilets, the toilets are novel. Um, the donkey boiler and the bucket shower. And then for electricity, we don't have, um, 
we have solar power, but we only have that in our staff houses. Right. Um, we use solar power to, to charge up radios, to charge up your phone or your camera or your laptop, or any batteries, things like that. Um, and in the camp, we have, we have 150 paraffin lanterns um, dotted all around the camp. When you get home at night from a game drive, um, there's, there's paraffin lanterns all over the camp. It's very romantic. You know, it's soft, it's a soft glow, rather than the harshness of, of, uh, of solar. solar yeah. lamp. And obviously the sound of ringing cell phones and all that type of thing. Yeah, it's none of that. <laughs> no, you genuinely unplug. When you, when you come to Masetla, you unplug. We can charge up your phone, you can use your, your, your phone. Um, yeah. But we, people generally, Put it in the safe when they arrive and that's where it stays. Don't look at it again. Have, have, you ever, have you ever had guests that have arrived, taken one look at these donkey boilers and long drops and gone, hang on a second, I don't know if this is for us, but by the end of the visit, they're going, hey, we're coming back. We have. So we're, we're, we're pretty overt and careful with our, with our advertising. So generally, people know what they're coming to. Right. You know, the photographs on the website or on TripAdvisor or whatever. So they generally know what they're coming to. But every now and then there's someone who wants to surprise his wife or girlfriend. It usually works that way. Um, we actually learned about 15 years ago um, to not do surprises. We know <laughs> my wife isn't surprises. I really don't. Unless she's into camping and this will be. Yeah. An amazing thing or glamping um, then then don't don't do the surprise because it's it's not for everyone um, it is what it is and, and not being able to plug in a hairdryer and things like that it's not for everyone and having to go out in the middle of the night if you need to go to the toilet and you don't want to use the potty the, the potty yes why am I searching for for a, for a better word you can it use the potty <laughs> Guessing. No, so, so yes, we have two parties with a lid yes. in each cabin. You have your own party, you don't have to share. Um, and, and we do actually say rather use the party than go wandering around at night. We're an unfenced camp. Anybody can, anything, not anybody, any, any animal can, can come wandering through. Yeah, you don't, don't want, want to care. rather you use don't... the party. Yeah, you don't want to bump into a hyena in the middle of the camp in the middle of the night because you're not going to need the potty or the toilet because you're going to do it right there on the spot. The main worry is not the hyena because he's it's it's hairy and he's, he's you know he'll he'll amble off. It's a buffalo. If you walk into a buffalo and it's and it's a dark night, you don't see him. No. Dark buffalo, <laughs> dark night. It's, yeah. <laughs> and buffaloes are not mad cows. They they are a whole different kettle of fish. Those things. And it's the big, we, we get the, the old Duggar boys yeah. who come and hang, hang out around the camp. So you've got four or six grumpy old men. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking of grumpy speaking old of men, how is, how is Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny is very well. Johnny is well. Um, I've just spoken to him. I spoke to him last week. He's doing okay in lockdown. But... He, as with everyone else, is just frustrated and they want yeah. to get back to work. Yeah, you know, we're... Because I suppose, Caroline, you, like everybody else, is that we nobody seems to know when anything is going to open. Yes, you can open for a conference, but can you do... In, in the case of Medicwe, you can't have a conference at Mosetla because they won't allow anybody in. Yeah. And also, nobody has spoken about cross-provincial travelling. Um, That's all we're waiting for. Yeah, You've just got to, be able to open the province, the, open the provincial borders, and, and we're good. We're good to go. And, but but it's a, it's a it's a vicious circle. We can't open without bookings, and we can't get bookings until we open. Yeah. So we've we've just decided we're gonna we're gonna take a chance. We're gonna open from. It's actually the last weekend in August, so the beginning of September. Right. Um, and we, we're going to take bookings, which we've done. And yeah, we'll just, it's a risk. 
and we'll have to go if, if the borders aren't open then we'll have to push those bookings out or, or, or refund them or whatever but we have to start somewhere yeah and we have to book bookings in order to bring everyone back to work well th this uh, is the this is the whole thing you know and I, I suppose in one way um, people are going to if they are going to go out and about they're going to do it locally because I, I was saying to my wife um, we're not going anywhere that needs to get on a plane for at least the next three years. Um, overseas travel, forget it. We were meant to have been in Thailand. We've just lost a lot of money because the company went insolvent. Um, so we, we lost the, you know, it's now gone into arbitration. Will we get it back? Who knows? But I don't, I don't see people getting on a flight anymore or anytime soon. And I do believe that they will look locally and there's, yeah. Medikwe is just an awesome, awesome venue if you are into the bush. And Mosetla specifically, it's a, it's a, it's well, a we different so. experience, a totally yes. different experience. And it's, it's, it's close by. It's, it's a four, uh, easy four hour drive from Jay yeah. River, Pretoria. Um, I'm speaking to, now that we've opened and we're, we're starting to advertise um, bookings, speaking to people and, and quite a few people from Cape Town. Mm -hmm. have phone to say right we want to we want to come up so once domestic flights or leisure flights are, are open then it's a it's a quick it's a quick flight up to to rt and then four hours up here you see i'm also concerned about local flights i've been reading and i won't mention the airline um but what they've been doing is taking bookings then cancelling the flight then offering the passengers a voucher yeah for for a flight at a later date and then they up the price of the next flight so they're okay. scoring like bandits and the passengers are are being you know are put in a situation where they can't get their money back because they're not refunding money they're giving vouchers and you can't yeah. it's not like for like anymore it's now apples and oranges which i don't think is fair not cool at all that's not cool no, I'm just hoping that that particular oh, airline wait. will, will, you know, will realize very quickly when people stop booking with them, what they're exactly. doing is, is wrong. We've got to wait for, for the borders to actually open before making those bookings. Yeah. Because they, yeah. But then by yeah. the same token, I had to go up north last week to do yes. uh, content production for a particular uh, camp. They very kindly, and it was my birthday, so I was going, yes, please. Um, but it was very weird going out. I uh, went to the police, got the necessary permits, and that was, that was the simplest of all. I had visions of having to please explain and being strip searched and all of that type of stuff, and nothing <laughs> happened. It was very oh, disappointing. It was, very dis <laughs> yeah. it was very disappointing. I was, I was all ready for it. You know, I came with dinner and a book. Um, but none of that. And they literally just handed me the form. I thought I had to sign it in the presence of. Turns out you can ask for forms, take them home, have, you know, your neighbors sign them, and you can all go off. Um, I was a bit worried about getting stopped at roadblocks. There were no roadblocks on the N4. The only ones were on the on-ramps. And that's where people were being stopped. I would have thought that they would stop you at the toll booths, because that's the easiest place to you're already exactly. slowing down. Um, but none of that. Drove there, drove back. It was only one province, so it's easy. You know, you're not yeah. three provinces away and you're going to get caught by the various traffic departments. And the moment I saw the Gauteng sign, I said to, to my wife, hey, don't need the permit anymore. We're home. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a yeah, well, to get to Medikwe, all you've got to do is go is, is hit Hardebeersport. Once you're in Hardebeersport, you're in the next province. So. That, that's, that's exactly it. But it's a long ride from there with many traffic officers parked on the side of the road with masks badly placed. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, are, just under the are any of your staff going out on game drives at the moment, uh, Caroline, mm -hmm. and, and doing images for, for your social media? No. Monica and Nosy are the only people there. Okay. And, and Monica, I mean, she goes out to go and do, to go and get water or, or do yeah. the data stuff run. 
and she's got her phone and she says, I've seen, I see the odd giraffe or zebra. You know, she's not on game drive. Yeah. <laughs> so, so no, we're not getting any, any of that. Um, but a lot of the lodges in Medique, 15 of the, of the 36 lodges are co the corporate. They're privately mm. owned by shareholders. And so, and the majority of the management couples who, li who, 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 work, who run those lodges live there. That's their home. Medique is uh, their home. So they haven't come to Kharteng or wherever to, for, for the lockdown. They're living there. And a lot of those guys are doing drives, doing video drives, that kind of thing. So we're keeping an eye and we know there's loads happening. The wild dog puppies are out and about. Sightings are amazing. I don't, I don't think it's because there's no guests that sightings are so, <laughs> are so animals are like, yay, we'll get out yeah, there. Yeah. I don't think that at all. I think there's still enough, there's still loads of vehicles out there. Because um, a lot of the, of the managers and, and a lot of the rangers are still are, are driving around. Yeah. Our rangers, Tony and Justice, are at home. And is Komoto still with you? No. Komoto oh. went and she, she now lives, um, she works with her husband at Tau Lodge. Oh, okay. Well, it's still in, in the... the... <laughs> no, she's, still in she's still in Medikwe. She's still in Medikwe, which is wonderful. I've just had a little message here from Zoom. Every now and again, they get a bit pedantic about time, going, you're running out of time. So we've got about eight minutes left okay. to chat before they're going to cut us off. Um, and I right. want to give you that full time. So people that want to book now for sort of August, September, uh, yes. so that they can miss the winter in Medikwe, which can be bitterly cold. Yeah. Well, <laughs> How do they go about it? Minus four in Joburg the other night. It mm -hmm. was the same in, in, in Medikwe. And Monica says it's like four degrees in the morning. It is yeah. free. When she so how do people there. go about how do people go okay. about booking? Are your offices open? Yes. Yes, Andrea runs the office. She's working from home. Um, so so info at the bushcamp.com. Okay. Is our um, email address. Um the, the bushcamp.com is our website. And, and are you? Yep. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking over you. Are you running specials um, for your reopening? Well, we're, we're keeping our, we've always had a good South African rate. We've always had a properly discounted South African rate, which is 1995 per person per night sharing. Right. And that's, and that's comfy accommodation, all meals and snacks. Um, two game drives a day with Johnny or Justice in really good, comfy uh, Land Rovers with bucket seats. Yep. What we're doing um, is if people are booking individually, um, we are, we're limiting our, our total number to 12. Okay, instead of 18. Large, but we're limiting it to 12 so you can have six and six on a vehicle and proper social distancing around yeah. the dinner table or the campfire under the stars and, and all of that. Um, if you're booking as a group, that's where we're running a special. We're, we're running a special of 25,000 Rand per night for a full camp exclusive use booking. Okay. Where you can bring eight people and have the whole camp to yourself, or you can bring 18 people if you're, if you're family and you don't need to socially distance. distance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're keeping it at 18, so it's nine and nine on a vehicle, and then nobody is sitting next to the ranger. So we're yeah. keeping them socially distanced. Yeah. Um, but also, you're very lucky that you've got that huge table for eating. Yeah. I mean, you can put 45 people at that table and still have two meters between everybody. 24, actually. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. I was close. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Yes, so it works, it works well. And what we're also doing, what, where that would work really well, the, the full camp exclusive use. We've got 10 twin cabins. Mm. So what, what, what people should be going for is, like corporates should be having um, a, a training meeting or a, or a board meeting or a, a get together after three months of not seeing each other meeting, where they're not on top of one another. They each bring 10 people, you each have a single cabin, single occupancy and there's loads of space around there yeah. 
Great stuff. Um, so that works really well for, for, for book, bookings of groups of people who, uh, who like one another and want to, want to travel <laughs> together, but aren't intimate and don't want to be yeah. on top of that. Great so stuff. photographic safaris, um, a yoga retreat, business meetings. The address once again for people so that they can, the moment they've seen this, they can phone and say, we've just seen the video, we want to come up. We, we need to, okay. to be socially distant, but not too distant. Yeah. Info at the Bush Camp, thebushcamp.com. Um, or they can phone us, um, 011-444-9345. And that's our office number, which is diverted to Amen. Andrea. Great stuff. Caroline, thank you so very much for chatting to us. Thank I wish you. you all the very, very best. I personally can't wait to get back to Medikwe um, and, and spend some time back there. And I'm sure you're chomping at the bit as we speak. Yeah, can't wait. My guest today on In Conversation With has been Caroline Lucas, owner of Mosetla Bush Camp in Medikwe. Thank you.